Welcome to Pimpy's Investment Chat, where we keep investment talk simple. And here's your host, Pimpy. What is going on out there, peeps? All right, still dealing with the flu, so excuse my voice if it sounds a little bit on a scratchy side. I got a lot of people asking me if the Iraqi dinar exchange rate has changed again. No, it has not. When you hear people out there, whether it's from the news or people posting about the exchange rate, they're usually talking about the open market rate, which is different than the official rate. We know right now the official rate is at $1,300. We know also the black market is somewhere around $1,450, which is where they wanted it in the first place. So let's get back to Iraq and find out if there's any good news out there. Before we get started, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not a subscriber, please do so, because when you do, it helps out the channel, and I certainly do appreciate it. If you're thinking about buying gold and silver, check out our friends at Money Metals Exchange. The link is down below in the description. If you are a first-time buyer and you spend more than $200, you will get an additional half ounce of silver with your order. Just follow the link down below in the description. No promo codes are needed. You can find me on other social media platforms like Facebook. I do have my own group called Pimpy's Investment Chat. Over here, we do talk about gold, silver, cryptocurrency, as well as foreign currency investments and any other investments you wish to talk about. Come on over here. It's free to join. Just follow the link down below in the description. I can be found on Twitter, MeWe, YouTube, Odyssey, and now Rumble. Yes, that's right. I finally got a Rumble. And in addition to that, you can find me over here at Pimpy's News Network. If I should ever get kicked off of YouTube, you can find me on any other one of these platforms. So come join me. It's free to do so. The links for all these locations are down below in the description. So come on over and join me. All right. As I was stating, you can see right here that, but you know, the it, it's on the exchange rate, the Iraqi dinar is. Now, it's not on the big one, the Forex, but it is under local exchange. And you can see right now it's trading on the open market at 1,459 dinars for every one U.S. dollar. That's the rate they're talking about. That's the one you don't want to get higher. The higher this gets, the worse off it is for us. That means more people are wanting U.S. dollars and they're willing to pay more Iraqi dinars for that. We don't want that to happen. But right now it's been maintaining in the same area now for quite some time. We've been waiting for this, and that is the budget to get approved. It looks like it might finally happen. Yes, finally. So the cabinet approved the draft budget tomorrow. The discount is in April. So the Finance Committee of the Iraqi Council representatives on Monday, the council ministers likely approved the draft federal budget law of 2023 tomorrow, Tuesday. So the committee member, al Kazimi said that the draft budget law will be approved tomorrow. The draft will arrive in the House of Representatives early next week to study, discuss, and make amendments. Then read, approved, and approved it in April so that al Sodini can start its programs. So just because the draft budget is getting approved, don't forget the House of Representatives got to teeter with it for a while. That's the thing about these budget laws. They take so long. What are they talking about? Getting done in April? Well, we're only four months into the next year, and we're just now getting a budget. One that hasn't passed in, oh, the last year and a half, so <laughs> at least it's getting something. Academy pointed out that the size of the budget is 170 trillion Iraqi dinars, stressing the need for the deficit to make sense. The member of the Finance Committee revealed the estimated share for Kurdistan is about 12%, provided that the region provides clear statements of its past and current revenues regarding oil exports and the number of employees. We've also heard in the news that it looks like Kurdistan and uh, the federal government might have finally come up with agreement on a draft budget law. We'll see if that's true or not. That has to be approved. Federation of Chambers, al Sadini directed to facilitate the entry of traders into the electronic transfer platform. So if you're going to be doing trading, you got to do it on a platform, just like uh, all the other stuff that's happening on this electronic payment platform. Like it's no different than the way we do banking here. It's just all electronic. They just want to make sure everybody's up to snuff and on a more current system is pretty much all it is. Sudini and the World Bank delegation discussed joint cooperation and support for the government's plan. So I love how they keep saying the government's plan. I'm actually really curious to see what the budget's going to look like. I know that there's a huge chunk of money that's supposed to go to uh, reform. And not just reform, but uh, starting a bunch of projects that should have been started a long time ago. Uh, with infrastructure. So I'm excited to see 
uh, how much is going towards infrastructure because that's going to make a huge difference on their employment numbers. So the decision of the council of ministers to publish the use of point of sale devices and implementation requirements. Again, this is like if you're going to a store and you're using the, your ATM card, you know, they have the little machines down there. You have ATM machines, point of sale. You know, you can swipe your card, you can purchase stuff, uh, you know, do what you need to do. But instead of dealing with cash, you just use a card. That's what they're implementing everywhere. That's how out of touch they are with a lot of things. So the finance minister said, we are determined to proceed with a package of fundamental reforms. So it talks about a meeting that took place and you're going to have about a list of 50 people on here that all attended. We don't need to know all that. What we need to know is that the meeting witnessed the discussions of ways to consolidate joint cooperation between Iraq and the World Bank and the emphasis on the continuation of bilateral coordination in the field of cooperation to promote sustainable developments in the financial, the economy, and investment sectors, and in line with the vision of the Iraq government aimed at benefiting from all forms of international support necessary to support development projects in Iraq. You got Talibani firing up the troops, telling them that all the problems of the Kurdistan region are being addressed in Baghdad, the federal government. And it looks like they are getting things ironed out. Now, this is great news. We know that the Port of Fall is a big for Iraq over there. And they are, you know, well underway as far as rebuilding that port. You know, I think they're somewhere around 47% uh, complete, but they are looking to put some big ships there now. Transport analysis completion rates for the docks of the Port of Fall and makes plans to buy modern ships. The Ministry of Transport announced on Sunday plans to purchase modern and advanced ships from Global Origins, while noting that the completion rates at the five docks of the Fall Port amounted to 41%. So they're 41% done, which is not bad. And they were supposed to be done in three years, but obviously uh, with all kinds of delays, it's uh, made that kind of hard to do. But 41% is good. At least they can start doing business. Let's get them ships in there and start dealing internationally. All right, so let's get to this article here because it is crazy. Man, al Qadimi has become the Donald Trump of Iraq. As soon as that guy got out of office, they're going to go after him with everything. Trying very hard to find ways to implement this guy so they can throw him in jail. Sounds familiar. An important statement from al Qadimi regarding the recent arrest warrants against his government team. He says, we look through the means of communications with astonishment. The leaked news about the is issuance of arrest warrants against a number of members of the government team of the former Prime Minister al Qadimi, since it has unfortunately become a contact for suspicious pages to circulate leaks from the most sensitive state institutions before they pass through official context. We find it necessary to mention the following. So, as usual, the news is doing their part by selective leaking of information. They're going to do what they can to try to make it sound worse than it is. Like I said, al Qadimi is the Donald Trump of Iraq. First, while we are proud of all the state institutions and have worked to support them, this type of executive action taken by investigative bodies linked to forces, parties, and political leanings that lack acceptable levels of independence indicates an open political approach in the targeting and liquidating everyone associated with the work with the previous government, regardless of the nature of their work. The measures of isolation, deportation, and administrative abuse that excludes hundreds of state employees within a few weeks were an example of this targeting. Second, all Iraqis know that the government of al Qadimi, and through the office of former prime minister demanded that the first weeks various parties to check the file of tax secretariats according to the official letters, which was August 19th of 2020. After investigative procedures, the previous government on September 26, 2022, revealed the circumstances of this file, referring to the accused after their arrest to the judiciary and put all the details before the public opinion with courage and transparency, noting that the whole issue dates back to a long time before the formation of al Qadimi's government. Third, it is clear that the aforementioned personalities were accused selectively, away from the course of the investigation, and the responsibility was held on personalities who fully performed their legal role and were not related to the tax file in the first place which constitutes additional evidence of the existence of clear political motives behind this. The action is supported and marketed. Yep, sounds just like Trump. Fourth, 
The intrigue and accusation reveals the continuous attempts to cover up the actual crimes, escape forward, and target political opponents. What happened was nothing but the, a media and political presentation and an attempt to shuffle the cards to cover up the real thieves instead of seriously seeking justice and revealing the truth, which is a basic assignment for every decision maker responsible before God and before the people. Here we ask, how is the one who uncovered the theft held accountable? How is the one who stole rewarded? Exactly. So this is, this is what we're talking about. Remember, Al-Kadimi went after Maliki. He knew Maliki and his family stole the money. But now that Maliki is in charge, he flipped the script. Fifth, as we affirm our lack of confidence in all the executive measures that led to the decisions, know the reasonableness and that they contain malicious political grievances and goals that have nothing to do with the truth or fairness. We demand and seek that the impartial Iraqi judiciary play its roles. In al has to be careful. Remember, the Supreme Justice, the Supreme Court over there, are all aligned with Maliki, so he's better be careful. And that this is supported by the Transparent and Fair International Investigation, then includes all the case and its characters, in a way that puts everyone before his responsibility and stops manipulation, selectivity, political revenge, and lack of transparency, and holds criminals accountable and those who stand behind them so that the Iraqis know who really steals their money and who uses them as a barricade to strike their political opponents in a matter that has nothing to do with human civilization. So al qadimi pledged to the Iraqi people to defend their interests in, at all costs, and he assumed responsibilities aware of the size of the threats and the unclear political atmosphere, which has been translated over the past two years into exposure, attacks, and assassination attempts that included the entire government team and well as international institutions for political purposes. This recklessness was and still is visible and reflects an approach that all sincere people must confront and stop. al qadimi is fully convinced of his role, which he performed with sincerity and honesty, and his behavior as an ethical approach in political and administrative dealings. And this, unfortunately, is missing in our days. We would like to confirm that he said previously, today and tomorrow, that he does not want to pursue or perpetrate the same vengeful behavior due to the state is not built like this, but rather quietly and allowing its institutions to work away from any pressures or directives to achieve justice in a rule of justice. So go on, al -Kadimi. Let's keep our fingers crossed and thoughts or prayers out to al -Kadimi. I can only imagine what he's going through. We see it happening over here in the United States. Anyways, that's it for now, you guys. Let me know what you think. I look forward to your comments down below. I'll get back at you later. I'm out.